So, um, so welcome, welcome again to another podcast today. Today, I want to talk about a podcast, and uh, our main point of contention and the main place where we're going to focus on is the Premier League clash between Chelsea and Brighton, as well. What I want to focus on today is I'm going to talk about um, the situation at Chelsea. So, <clears throat> yesterday, Chelsea play, uh, play, went away for a West London derby against uh, Brentford. The game, the game itself was um, it was not well coordinated because actually Chelsea managed to lose. It was actually a loss. The draw came in as a loss. So. Chelsea in the first half played quite well. The football was quite great. The surprise tactical change was not expected by Brentford. Chelsea decided to match Brentford man-to-man, -man, going with a 3-5-2. But in some instances in the first half, it looked like Pochettino was actually playing Levi Colwell as a... He was playing Colwell as a left-back. And this was creating a lot of problems for Chelsea because we started to see Chilwell uh, playing further forward as a left winger while Colwell was playing further back as a left back. During throwings, you started to see Chilwell handing over the throwing duties to Levi Colwell. But what struck me yesterday is the performance in the second half. This is another time that we are coming out of a match to make our complaints about the performance after the halftime break. So during the first half, Chelsea dominated possession quite well. Chelsea were playing beautiful football. The pressing was on point. The stopping of counter-attacks, especially from players such as uh, Ivan Toni and Wissa, it was quite great. Neil Mope did not manage to start. But we started to see some things crippling in into Chelsea. And these are things that we have actually seen throughout the season. These are not things that are happening for the first time in this football club. They are things that we have started to see crippling in. They, when players go for halftime breaks, they come back from the halftime breaks looking defeated. We don't see the vigor, the energy, the game plan that they actually employed in the first half. Actually, funny enough, majority of people have realized that Chelsea have a very good record in the first half. If it was in the first, uh, Chelsea relied on their first half performances throughout the season, the Chelsea should have actually uh, challenged for the title going by first half performances. But in the second half, I don't know what Pochettino talks about during the halftime break, but the players usually come out like they are clueless. It's like two different teams. In the first half, you see a different uh, side of Chelsea. You see a, a more a Chelsea that is more the uh, uh, that is more pressing well, that is passing the ball well, that is creating chances well. But in the second half, you usually see a different form of Chelsea. A Chelsea that is quite passive. A Chelsea that is quite scared. It's like the manager tells them, just go to the second half, try and hold yourself up, try to contain yourself, and then let's see what the opposition are trying to do to counter our gaming tactic. And this is a pragmatic approach in football. Chelsea should be coming out uh, in the second half with the same vigor that they played in the first half. In the game against Manchester City, we saw this. In the first half, Chelsea had a solid structure, a solid counter-attacking system, and a solid way to progress from the defensive side of the game to the attacking side of the game. But when we looked at, when we looked at the performances that Chelsea put up in the second half, they were much more passive, they were much more reserved, and they did not actually want to come out from their def from their defensive third to try at least and come out and try to attack. Now, the game yesterday, a lot of people are saying that it is just a draw. A lot of you uh, have really attacked me and questioned my my loyalty. Some, some people have actually said that I'm too negative when I'm trying to analyze Chelsea games. I do not like to look at the positive side of the game. So, did you see any positivity in the game? Okay, there are some positivity in the game that I, I definitely have to talk about, but majority of the game, we did not see the positivity. And questions are now being asked. People are now shifting to blame the manager, and now the thing that even excites me about the fans, especially the away fans, is now they are now trying to go at the board. You can now hear 
the fans chanting uh, the C word at Tolboli, and you can see them chanting the F word at uh, Mauricio Pochettino, the F word, F Mauricio Pochettino. We cannot say that in our stream because you know very well YouTube policies with the regards to uttering some other words in YouTube. So first thing that I have to talk about is uh, the, the, the in-depth game management strategy that Pochettino employs in the game. Is this a game management strategy that is effective for the team? Are the, are the players managing the game perfectly or whatever we are seeing is just um, what Chelsea are? Is, it, is this now the Chelsea that we are supposed to be contended with? Is this the kind of shit show that players uh, are contended with? Now, the question that uh, a lot of you want me to talk about is the overall performances. So, generally, the performance was not great, and Chelsea actually had to scramble for a draw in the latter stages of the game. This is because Chelsea had to try to look for a way to try and get something out of the game. And that's why I was not comfortable going into the halftime break with a one lead because five minutes after the halftime, they already equalized. Uh, and this was a defensive uh, disaster class from Disasi. A player who has been praised uh, for, the, for his performance against Haaland at Manchester City and his performance against Liverpool in the Carabao Cup final, majority of the game. But this game, he actually led the created the first mistake that made Chelsea to go level in this game. And these are some of the mistakes that you cannot continue to perpetuate in a big club. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about in this game, I wanted to talk about the positives. I wanted to talk about the players who came out to be very positive signings and positive, created a positive uh, impression for Chelsea in this game. And this was players such as Malo Gusto. Malo Gusto, again, is creating a case for himself as being one of the most, uh, one of the most improved players at Chelsea. Not, most, not just improved, but one of the most talented players at Chelsea. He has taken up uh, Rhys James' uh, right-back position quite well he's good defensive wise he just lacks some bit of strength which he can acquire he's just 20 years old so he can build up his muscles and his strength to become one of the best right backs and if gusto can manage to not be quite injury prone as Rhys james he's good his passing is good his dribbling is good one thing one underrated skill that gusto has that majority of people don't realize is that gusto has the ability to dribble past tight spaces he's some he's a, he's a fullback when you give the ball you expect him to carry the ball and progress it forward or play the ball inwards but when you look at the other side whenever chilwell is given the ball even if there's a player making a run you'll just see chilwell pass the ball backwards and it annoys me chilwell is not quite adventurous he doesn't like to pass the ball in field he doesn't like to look for those midfield runners and if he attempts to pass the ball midfield he hesitates for a long time and Chelsea end up losing possession. But when you look at the right hand side, what Gusto is doing is quite well. His link up play with Cole Palmer is also quite impressive. He knows how to play those one twos with Cole Palmer, with Cole Palmer making that ball forward and enabling Gusto to be making that overlapping run. So I can give a very huge credit for Gusto. He's been really good uh, for the past uh, three or four games. And he's actually been one of the best performers, uh, performers in the team. Petrovic cannot be blamed for the two goals. The first goal, I said, is Disasi created a lot of uh, problems for the goalkeeper. First of all, he came out for the ball, then hesitated, then the goalkeeper could not get the ball, then it is 1-1. One, one. The second goal, it was just uh, luck failing to close down uh, Wissa, and this allowed him to have an incredible bicycle kick against Chelsea. So players that you, you can actually take some positives from players such as Gusto, Cole Palmer also was quite well. He had an assist yesterday. But in general, you cannot say that the team performed well. So if a team, you cannot, and uh, Gary Neville said that Chelsea is, an, is a billion pound of bottle jobs 